Pink Floyd's Roger Waters found himself in hot water after criticizing the Biden administration for the U.S.'s involvement in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. In a recent interview with CNN, Rogers called President Joe Biden a war criminal for, quote, fueling the fire in Ukraine. Well, he's Let's fueling watch. the fire in the Ukraine for a start. That is a huge crime. Why won't the United States of America uh, encourage Zelensky, the president, to negotiate, obviating the need for this horrific, horrendous war but you're, that's you're, killing. You're blaming. How, we don't know how many Ukrainians. But you're blaming the, the party Russians. that got invaded. Come on, you've got it reversed. Well, no, I, well that's that you. You know, any war. When did it start? What you need to do is look at the history, and you can say, well, it started on this day. You could say it started in 2008. Okay, it's basic. This war is basically about. The action and reaction of NATO pushing right up to the Russian border, which they promised they wouldn't do when Gorbachev negotiated the withdrawal of the USSR from the whole of Eastern Europe. When you say this, then I have to say, what about our role as liberators? You of all people, we you have no role as liberators. World War II, talking? World War II. You, you, you got into you World lost War II because. Come it's on. Pearl Harbor. You, Pearl Harbor. You were completely isolationist until that sad, that devastating. I, I would argue awful we were always in, going to in get in, and that pushed us in. But thank God the United States got in, right? You well, lost your father well, in World War II. Thank God well, yeah, the United thank States. But right? thank God the Russians had already won the bloody war almost by then. Don't forget, 23 million Russians died. Protecting you and me you from would, the Nazi you, menace. Hey, and you would think the Russians would have learned their lesson from war and wouldn't have invaded Ukraine. Well, you, you, Fair? with all your reading, I would suggest you, Michael, <laughs> that you go away and read a bit more and then try and figure out what the United States would do if the Chinese were putting um, nuclear armed missiles into Mexico and Canada. The Chinese are too busy encircling Taiwan as we speak. Okay? They're not encircling Taiwan. Taiwan is part of China. And oh. that's been absolutely accepted by the whole of the international community since 1948. And if you don't know that, you're not reading enough. Go and read about it. Mm, wow. <laughs> that was some fiery stuff. Uh, Waters appears to be one of the only celebrities against the Western war narrative and how it's impacting global affairs from the U.S.'s actions across the globe, including Taiwan and even the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, makes a lot of reasonable points yeah. in that interview. What was so fascinating is how this interview was framed by the kind of liberal, you know, establishment media mm -hmm. as, you know. And by the way, I, I, I like that guy. That's Michael Smirkanish. I've been on his, his show before. Uh, he, he has a lot of independent thoughts. I think I don't agree with the thrust of the question he was getting at here. Yeah, people but were go, pointing out yeah, that he's ahead. someone who was considered to be a fair, a fair dealer. Straight, straight down the middle calling balls and strikes but the the media was framing this interview as you know uh waters defends russia waters backs russia in the beginning of the interview was precipitated by a question um from michael where he was basically asking you know you have this montage in your concert of war criminals and joe biden's face is among them why and waters is like well because because he's a war criminal, and that's what precipitated this whole conversation, so it wasn't out of the blue. That being said, it caused such a stir because it is so rare to hear anywhere on establishment media like CNN any of the precipitating events that are widely considered to be uh, the, the provocation to Russia. And again, that doesn't say that it is ever okay or right to invade another country. But the idea that we, uh, this was kind of a random event that uh, isn't a response to certain actions that could have not been taken by the U.S. The idea that adding more countries to NATO now is an escalation on the part of the West, that is largely absent from any of the Western media narrative. And so it really set off people's alarm bells when they were given for the first time some explanation for how we got into this conflict. Yeah, no, it was incredible. Uh, and he, he laid out the history there quite well. And then Smirkana tried to do that. Well, what about what about the Nazis? What about World World War II? Can I tell you that upsets me so much? Hitler. The complete and total erasure of that those twenty plus million Russian lives right. uh, in World War II. It comes up again and again in these kinds of conversations. I actually went to a uh, comedy show uh, over the weekend where uh, the opening, you know, the kind of opening salvo. Got out of the, the comedian, apartment, huh? 
I did. It was an it was an outdoor okay. uh, venue. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, the the opening segment was about how. Uh, you know, when was the last time Russia was good? And, you know, but with all the animosity with Russia was about this, the space race and uh, how you know, they can't even win the space race. And every fact of it was wrong from the Russia having beaten us and almost every metric in the space race, except for literally getting to the moon, to this idea that we were the great big heroes in World War II. Like, when's the last time the Russians, Russia was right. good? I mean, we, were I mean, all, I we all get to be of, the heroes I, in World War II. I, mean, I, think, I can think of so, a lot of times when the Russia was the hero, but especially to ignore the whole World War II of it all. You know, I, I did an interview recently also with Norm Finkelstein on my show whose parents were uh, Holocaust survivors and he talks about how in his house it, you could not say a bad word against Russians. You couldn't criticize Russians like that. And the idea that we've come so far from that because of the Cold War and because of America's distaste for, you know, communism, socialism, the Red Scare and all of that, uh, that we have erased this important part of American history. I'm very grateful to Waters for correcting the record in some respects here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and he laid out the things that the U.S. has done that are you know are not helping to de-escalate this conflict, yeah. and, and he was saying right, well you know why does this aid not accompany a demand that if it's going to continue, they need to negotiate right. because the only way this war ends realistically is with some agreement between Zelensky and the Russian government, probably losing uh, the Donbas or the you know the regions that were not really under under Ukrainian control anyway, right. and then and then this comes to an end. That's how the conflict will end. Everyone One way or who. Another. Who and, and, he, and he was right to call out, you know, anyone who's read, who understands historical narratives or understands modern warfare, that yeah. it's not like they're not going to beat off Russia. Yeah. So, so we're just we're going to prolong this this war unless it's accompanied by more clearer demands for diplomacy. For, for diplomacy. Yeah. So why 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 is it crazy to say that? Yeah, it's so bizarre. And then that pivot to China at the end in an effort to pretend mm -hmm. as though, you know, there there is a real there's a real problem whatever you think about the bad actions of other people. And I know that leftists sometimes get criticized for, you know, focusing disproportionately on America's harms while ignoring the, the claim is that we ignore or downplay the bad actions that other countries take. And I don't intend to do that in the least. But I think the opposite is true in the context of the broader media environment. And that's why the left is so keen on right. emphasizing what America's role is in that's all of fair. these things, because otherwise there would be, wouldn't be a part of the conversation. So Waters just simply articulating the reality of the one China policy, articulating the reality of China's strategic uh, the, the important, the strategic importance of Taiwan to China versus the United States on the other side of the world. The cultural ties and historical ties and you know political ties between those places. Well, to but pretend as though China is encircling Taiwan when many leftists, many people have been pointing out the genuine encirclement of American military presences around Taiwan and the region. You know, it's important for people to at least be having these conversations, and it's frustrating that it takes uh, a musician. That's fair <laughs> enough. I, I do. I, I do. And I want to be careful here. I, I empathize with the desire of many Taiwanese to not be part of China. I also would not want to be ruled by the Chinese government, an authoritarian a human rights disaster that had, to my mind, the most dystopian COVID response of any major government on earth. Yeah, now, I, but I there also is empathize nothing... as an American who feels many aspects of our own country very dystopian, having the largest incarcerated. Uh, population in the entire world, including larger than China, despite it being three times bigger than the United States. Of now America. you are doing the thing leftists always I mean, do that I you mean, just said. You just but said. This is, but this is the problem. Like, it, I, I'm not going to play. I'm not saying one is worse than the other, but I am not going to talk about China's. Bad I, I, I'm comfortable they saying they one is worse than the other, but. Just because I I can criticize both, I think the Chinese government is worse than the American government. But I look, I sympathize with. I, look, I don't want to. I don't want to govern people. Uh, period. I, this is actually a kind of you know libertarian uh, approach. If you you break away, do your own thing. Have be, have a smaller and smaller communities where rules are set by by more local authorities. Uh, that is the kind of model of government that I want to move to. So so that's absolutely fine by me. Uh, yeah, but that's but, not but something China is going to allow. This isn't an argument about you know Taiwanese self determination. Yeah. This is about. An I don't think we have any duty how... or burden to help them achieve that result. And in fact, clearly there is not a lot we can do to help Taiwan achieve that result that doesn't risk a larger global confrontation that would be right, much but, worse. But more specifically, this is a conversation about the fact that there is a one China policy that has been respected by 
both sides for strategic reasons mm -hmm. for the last 50 years or so. For strategic and reasons. And that there is a, a... Not a, moral reasons. Right. And there is a revisionist history going on with the United States where it's pretending as though it didn't benefit from that exact bargain. It didn't benefit from the liminal space that Taiwan has been holding. And now trying to grandstand as though that it, it's, it's making this great anti-imperialist fight for Taiwanese independence when the reality is that this is a, a, a frolic and a detour from a well-established policy. And you have people acting as though that this is a very different kind of fight than it was before. Again, I think it's very valuable for people to be able to just articulate the history that unfortunately isn't taught very often in the United States and is very regular, irregularly articulated by pundits on television. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have more rising right after this. Stay with us.